and welcome back. As always, as part of the conversations we have every morning, uh, to share with you a little bit of what happened many, many years ago in history. And on this day, we're going back to the year 1887. None of us here was born at that time, uh, but we'll tell you about it. It is the start of what is today known as the American uh, film industry, uh, Hollywood. It was on this day that uh, um, Hollywood was officially registered. And it was registered by a guy called Harvey Wilcox. He officially registered it with the Los Angeles County Recorder's Office on this day in 1887. I had to do a little reading about when Nollywood itself was uh, registered mm. um, in the early 2000s, I believe. Wow. Um, <laughs> but anyway, Wilcox and his wife, uh, Dada, had moved to Southern California um, of, of four years earlier to Topeka, Kansas, and they made a huge fortune, a fortune rather, in real estate. Um, a lot later, they had bought 160 acres of land in the Cahuga Valley, located in the foothills of uh, the city of Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. It was from there that, of course, uh, they continued and uh, um, eventually bought more land and named that place. In 1887, he decided to use that name and filled with, uh, or rather filed with the Los Angeles uh, County Recorder's Office a deed and a parcel map of the property. Mm -hmm. It was named after a friend of theirs who was named uh, Holly, apparently. Nice. Um, I'm not sure why exactly they chose that, but you know that's when it all started back then in 1887. And from there, it has now become one of the most popular names and popular cities in the world. Um, when it was named back then, it had just about 500 um, residents or 500 inhabitants. Um, Los Angeles at that time had about 100,000 people that were residents in that place. But now there's millions and millions of people who have gone through Hollywood and uh, currently resident there. Mm -hmm. And once again, this happened in 1887. It also, let me, I think I also found something about this. It also um, is um, home to many of the biggest studios in the world um, that have made some of the biggest movies that you have ever heard of. The Universal Pictures was found, uh, founded there. Warner Bros. was founded there. Paramount Pictures also was founded um, also there in Hollywood. Interesting. And I found out that Hollywood is the oldest film industry in the world. Yeah, oldest, 1887. Also the largest, the largest film industry, <laughs> you know, in terms of revenue, obviously, because remember how we love to go to the cinemas and it's just so sad how unpatriotic so to speak we can be. We just want to watch Hollywood movies because yeah, we can trust the action, we can trust, you know, the post-production, we can trust the cast, you know. So. I'm not sure if, I'm not sure if, you know, unpatriotic is a, is, a, is a way to describe it. I think Nigerians still want some level of quality and if they can't trust that they have that quality mm -hmm. and, um, and value for their money, they would rather just go to places is where they, you know, where are shown that it. they have, yeah, where they can mm. find them, you know. So it's not because, you know, oh, you know, we don't want to watch black movies. I watched, I said, I said it last week that I watched a little Ray, and I was very yes, impressed. impressed. And it's yes. not the first time, actually. I've seen a lot of Nigerian movies mm -hmm. um, on Netflix, and of course, you know, even the ones, you know, that make it to the cinema that have very, very good, great production, great stories, mm -hmm. great, you know, lineup and everything. Um, you truly enjoy that one hour, 30 minutes or two hours of your time that you used to watch them. Mm -hmm. um, it just, you know, hasn't been like that forever you know yes. it only started you know maybe you know eight you know years ago or you know in that in that range but it's good that nollywood nigeria's film industry is i think the second largest movie industry in globally world. and that's in terms of output yes you know we produce about 2500 movies a year nigerian Oof. film nigerian film makers are doing better than before we have to give them kudos for that anyway and, and it only started in the early 2000s you know and, and we've uh, made remarkable made, yeah, progress in that short have. time so from good news to something relatively sad, it's uh, 2004, there was a Hajj pilgrimage stampede in Saudi Arabia, or about 251,000 people were trampled to death, about 244 others injured. Stampedes happen in Saudi Arabia every other time. Like, I mean, it's, it's becoming a it's become a common occurrence and uh, issues of crowd control and all of that because millions and millions of people throng there every year to, you know, do the Hajj. And the one for 2004 killed lots of people February 1st and uh, the incidents took place during the ritual stoning of the three pillars in the Mina Valley. It was close to Mecca and the final day of the Hajj ceremonies. I mean, take a look at the pictures on your screen. They were horrendous. I mean, seeing lots of bodies lying on the floor, covered in white sheets. So many people died because, you know, people basically trampled on them. There was a stampede and all of that. You know, so anyway, this ritual, this stoning the devil ritual, 
is notoriously crowded. And some clerics actually disapprove of the activity. They say it's un-Islamic. You know, Saudi minister responsible for the Hajj, Ayad Madani at that time said at least seven people were in critical condition. And I recall that there was a more deadly Hajj related incident in the year 1990. You know, during that stampede, 1,426 pilgrims died. I mean, if you remember the images at that time, it was so sad. People couldn't, people couldn't breathe. People were, pe I mean, it was just such a terrible incident. And uh, we just hope that, you know, it's actually an event that rakes in millions and millions of naira, actually billions of dollars. I mean, Saudi Arabia as a country is, was expected to have earned up to 8.5 billion naira uh, from Hajj. And dollars Muslims, or naira. Billion dollars, actually. <laughs> billion dollars from the Hajj, you know, because Muslims, as I said earlier, globally make the annual Hajj pilgrimage to Saudi Arabia. So the issue of crowd control will always come. Issue of um, other, uh, other, you know, Muslim clerics saying this is un-Islamic. You know, but that's well, you know, it they, it, it's, it's, you know, for there, of course, would be that conversation. And even in the Christian world, there's certain things that, you know, are done that, you know, some denominations would say, um, you know, on, on Christian, Christ, on Christian or on Christ. Like there, there's a there's a, you know, always that going to be that conversation, different understandings to what the Bible or what the Quran says. Yes. Um, the Hajj, uh, of course, the stoning of the devil, as it's popularly called, is maybe the, one of the most popular events that takes uh, place during the Hajj. And you would see uh, people from all around the world, even here in Nigeria, um, flying to Saudi Arabia every year just to be a part of that. Yes. Um, it is taken very, very, very seriously. But one thing that I would mention, if, if uh, late last year you must have seen pictures of the venue of uh, where the Hajj takes place and seen that it was completely empty, because of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm just putting that out there to, to show how much uh, the pandemic has changed our world and changed, you know, what we normally used to see as normal. Um, there was no Hajj last year. It's very likely that there may not be a Hajj this year. And we would have to see how we can do some, do certain things virtually. We'll have to see how, you know, technology can come into play and mm -hmm. make um, and change the way that we live our lives generally, and yes. maybe also you know protect you know ourselves better. True. Instead of going True. to Saudi Arabia, True. maybe there's a way that some of these things can be. Oh, done. see, you know, lots of people argue otherwise because you know, the, you know, how they explain it is is to say that Hajj means to attend a journey, meaning that you ha actually have to physically walk the path. But anyway, well, you're not walking not to Saudi Arabia, are you? No, 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 definitely. I'm talking about okay. walking, walking around. And they're saying you know, it's, a, it's a process of, it's an internal journey, not just also one of, you know, walking around, you know, Saudi Arabia. Very critical about how, how people understand it. You know, so, you know, it's the same way people can say that you don't necessarily need to, some people would argue that you don't necessarily have to be in church Yes. Um, on Sunday to worship, you know, God, you know, can, can find you anywhere that you are. You can stay at home and have that service and worship. Mm -hmm. You can do it online. You can pray at any time. You don't have to kneel in front of uh, the Virgin Mary statue for, you know, your prayers to be answered. There's a lot of, you know, some of all those mm -hmm. different, different angles here and there that people would always throw in. And it should be the same thing with the Muslims and with Hajj um, also. Yes. So would, would um, anyway, 1887 and the year 2004, uh, that's where we're uh, shedding light on today in uh, history. Uh, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we're going straight into talking about the Nigerian army withdrawing their legal team from the judicial panel set up to investigate the NSARS protest and the after effects. Stay with us.